The body field is an energetic field filled with patterns of information. All of the organs in our bodies generate their own specific fields. One organ in particular seems to generate significant fields which affect the entire body. The heart is the emperor in the system, the liver uh, and all the organs have other tasks, but the heart is overruling all. There's a concept in energy medicine called energy cardiology that says that the signals produced by the heart are all of regulatory importance. The heart is constantly emitting sound, pressure waves, heat, light, electrical, magnetic, and electromagnetic signals. All of the cells in the body are receiving these different kinds of signals at different times because they travel at different velocities through the circulatory system. The heart generates by far the largest rhythmic electromagnetic signal in the body. If you look at the, this magnetic field as a carrier wave, it's being modulated with information. So it's the carrier wave for information. And the work in our lab has shown quite clearly that it's modulated with emotional patterns. Uh, those are for feeling angry or frustrated, irritated. The information that's being imprinted on that magnetic field is very different than if we're feeling care or love or compassion towards that person. The heart has been found to have rhythmic beating patterns that can be incoherent or coherent. These patterns are closely linked to our emotions and how we feel. When the heart's rhythmic beating pattern is smooth and ordered, it's called a coherent rhythm. And that coherent rhythm entrains or synchronizes the brain rhythm, the nervous system, the bodily organs and glands all dance in harmony to that heart coherent rhythm. Positive emotions, what we tend to call positive, things like love, appreciation, care, forgiveness, gratitude, all lead to a very different kind of heart pattern than negative things, like if we're feeling anger or irritation, anxiety, uh, those create what are called uh, incoherent rhythms or disordered patterns. On the other hand, we have the positive feelings when we're just appreciating the sunset and how beautiful it is. Our heart's beating out this what we call coherent rhythm. It's a sine wave-like pattern that uh, the, the heart is sending to the brain. And we call it heart coherence because in research we find that the heart has to get into this synchronized, coherent, rhythmic pattern of heart rate in order for the rest of the brain and the nervous system and body to entrain and synchronize to that powerful rhythm. So it starts with the heart. When we feel the pulse, what we're feeling is the pressure wave created by the beating heart. It's not actually the flow of blood, it's the, the pressure wave. So every time the heart beats, that pressure wave goes to the brain and throughout the body. And it, if we look at the brain level, that pressure wave synchronizes all the neurons. In fact, the brain would be in trouble if it didn't have that synchronizing signal uh, to kind of give us a global synchronizing effect. When someone is in coherence, you can often feel their love or their compassion or their gratitude radiating. Coherence is the optimal physiological state that underlies learning and performance and uh, facilitating the body's natural regenerative processes. The heart has its own intrinsic nervous system, which can sense, feel, remember, and process information that's independent from the brain. We always think of the information input system as being entirely in the brain. But we're now discovering information that the heart receives information first and then relays it to the brain. Studies have shown that the heart responds faster than the brain to outside stimulation. One of the more recent studies we did uh, in our labs was looking at the, what we ended up titling the electrophysiology of intuition. And there was some uh, previous research that had been done showing that the body would respond in a way that would predict a future event if the future event was emotionally significant and relevant to the person. Participants were attached to sensors to record their brainwave activity, heart activity, and heart-brain interactions. A person would be sitting in a computer, push a button, and then we're recording physiological data, and six, eight seconds later, you would be shown a, a photograph, 
working, and the photograph would be from two opposite ends of the spectrum of emotional arousal. Participants were shown pictures of car accident victims, snakes attacking, and other disturbing images. On the other end of the spectrum, the pictures included flowers or sunsets. The photographs were randomly assigned for display to the participants. What's key here is the computer assigned not only which photograph, but which type of photograph after the data was already recorded. So it was absolutely impossible for the research subject, the experimenter, to have any kind of foreknowledge of what photograph it might be. The computer itself didn't even know. The results were surprising. The body responded even before the picture was displayed. What we found was that not only did the body indeed respond prior to the event, you know, the scene, the picture, in a, in a way that would predict it, but it was the heart that responded first. The heart's response was not only faster, but the signal it sent to the brain varied depending on the emotional content of the picture. Looking at the signals that the heart was sending to the brain, that the heart literally sent a different message to the brain, depending on what the future picture was going to be. Then you saw a brain response, then you saw the body response, which is where it then became conscious. So the flow of this in, uh, what, intuitive information is heart, brain, body, and then you have to have the body response for it to become consciously aware of it. What these experiments reveal is changing our basic understanding of how the human body functions. It appears as though the heart and brain, later, have access to a field of information not bound by time and space. If we're talking kind of quantum holographics or quantum physics, that's old news. So we're really starting to have ways now of showing that we really do have a, an energetic or an electronic system. And um, that that's really primary, that it's really not bound by time and space. The heart is connected to a field of information and intelligence that's different but complementary to the field of the brain. It's very clear these neurons in the heart and the brain part uh, have short and long-term memory. They process information. It's a functional brain. Other researchers theorize that the heart may be the master organ for imprinting information into the body field. There's a lot of neural tissue in the heart. And we believe that neural tissue is there in order to act as an imprinter for the hologram. The body's holographic body field is continually supplied with information via the pressure waves of the heart. Inside the heart there is an enormous amount of charge. Now the pressure waves in the presence of this charge inside the chamber of the heart is sufficient to imprint information. If the heart is transmitting or imprinting information, there must be a way for the cells in the body to receive that information. There are receptor protein cells on the outside of the cell which are simply there to, re to receive environmental information. How is my day today? What is going on out there? What does the body want this little cell to do today? You see what I mean? There has to be uh, intercellular communication, but there has to be one source so there can be one control system for the body.